Now, EU lawmakers have just approved the world's first legal framework on artificial intelligence. The Act aims to balance the safety and reliability of AI use for people across Europe, whilst also fostering its development in various industries. It's been five years in the making, and it could be seen as a precedent for countries struggling to control AI's rapid advance. And for more, I'm joined by our correspondent, Lucia Schulten, who is in Strasbourg. Um, Louis, Lu, Louisa, tell us more about what the Parliament just voted on. Yes, yeah, so the European Parliament today has decided on the EU AI Act. And this piece of legislation is a decisive one for regulating the sector of artificial intelligence. Um, it is deemed to be the first one uh, by a major regulator worldwide that is that comprehensive. And the principle which underlies this, um, this act is relatively simple. So the idea is the riskier the AI system, the higher the threshold for regulation. Um, and that goes as far as there are certain things that are being banned by these AI Act. And then from there, they decide, there are like certain um, areas where they decide um, what kind of regulation is needed. And to, for this Act to enter into force, it has been decided today by the European Parliament, but it still needs a final approval by the EU member states, um, which is supposed to happen in April, and only then it will enter into force. And so give us a sense of what's going to change uh, once it does enter into force. What's going to change for people living uh, here in the European Union? Yeah, so for people in the European Union, the European institutions have been saying they do this, they do regulate AI systems to give people trust into these. And there is also a certain amount of clarity coming. And I have already mentioned these bans. And just to make this clear, there are certain things which will be prohibited in the European Union. One of these is, for example, that you will not be allowed to do a facial recognition on CCTV live streams, except for the authorities in very, very restricted circumstances. For example, when there is a case of terrorism or if you're looking for a victim of kidnapping. But apart from that, this will be forbidden, as well as um, certain manipulative behavior. There is the, the, the idea of the social scoring should be banned in the European Union once this enters into force. And these bans, they are already also expected to enter into force force six months after the law has entered into force. So this could be before the end of this year. Lucia Shilton reporting from Strasbourg. Thank you so much for that. And I'm joined now by Janosch Delka, who's DW's chief technology correspondent. Welcome, Janosch. Um, tell me, what will this law change for people like you and me living here in the EU? Well, it won't change anything immediately, but we will see increasingly those effects over the next coming of years. Now, after this vote today, there are still a few formalities left to be settled. Once that's done, that's probably by May or June of this year, um, the law is going to take effect gradually over the next two to three years. And along the lines, we're going to increasingly feel the effect of those laws. For example, for the two of us living here in the European Union, we will have a right to know whenever we interact with an AI system. So, for example, you know, if you use a chatbot like ChatGPT online, there would have to be a disclaimer saying, okay, this is an AI system you're interacting with. The same is true for a call center, for example. Um, and then, of course, there are also changes, sort of like less obvious changes behind the scenes that we might not feel immediately, but that have, you know, a significant impact on us as well. And that is sort of the idea that all the AI systems we're going to use will have to fulfill these requirements for what the EU now calls trustworthy artificial intelligence. Okay, so quite comprehensive. This is, we have to remember, this is the world's first comprehensive legal framework on AI, isn't it? So, you know, how easily and successfully can this be implemented? in practical terms. Yeah, I mean, passing laws is one thing and then enforcing right. them is another. Is something else. Yes. So, um, you know, this is really going to be a litmus test for this the next couple of years. Um, the EU in Brussels is setting up its own AI office that will monitor particularly, um, you know, big AI systems. And then each of the 27 member countries in the EU um, is naming their own AI watchdog where people will be able to file a complaint. Now, you know, 
this is completely new. All these offices are being set up now. Um, you know, they are, we will have to see if they get the right people with the right expertise. And, you know, the big question is really, you know, will they, will they get the job done? Mm -hmm. So kind of a work in progress, I guess. Now, this is EU-wide, isn't it? Does this act have any influence at all outside of Europe? Well, you know, that's at least what lawmakers in Brussels are hoping for. So they're hoping for what they call the Brussels effect. Essentially, the idea that, you know, you, the laws that have been passed here will sort of inspire or will be some kind of blueprint for the rest of the world, where other, you know, legislators are now looking into similar issues. Um, there's sort of precedent for that. Um, you know, that's what happened with the GDPR, our current data protection rules here in the, uh, in the European Union. They took effect back in 2018. And then we saw that, you know, afterwards, countries like Brazil, for example, passed data protection laws that very much aligned with the GDPR. And, well, you know, now the hope by many lawmakers in Brussels is that history will sort of repeat itself here. Okay, so leading by example. Apparently not everyone's happy with some exceptions um, that have been made in this law for certain, certain applications. Can you give us a couple of examples of those? Yeah, yeah. And let me start by saying, you know, artificial intelligence poses significant risks to our fundamental rights. And the AI Act now really addresses a lot of them. But that being said, there are, you know, what human rights activists call loopholes in this law. Um, a good example is, is the use of um, facial recognition technology, a specific use, live facial recognition technology in public spaces. Now, in general, this AI Act bans that, but there are exemptions for, um, for law enforcement, for example, you know, when they're looking for a missing child or when there's imminent terrorist threat. Um, now, law enforcement says, you know, we need that in order to do our job. But on the other hand, you have human rights activists and, um, you know, people coming from that sort of privacy background who are warning that, you know, this could sort of erode fundamental rights here and that it would essentially affect everyone living here in the European Union. Fascinating. DW's Chief Technology Correspondent, Janos Delka, thanks so much for those insights. Really interesting. Now, artificial intelligence, as we know, promises many innovations. Some of those are feared. Many are seen as making a positive contribution. Researchers at the Australian University have now developed an AI application that they hope will benefit people with dementia, called Viv, a character who serves as a companion for those with memory problems. Viv is currently being tested at a care home in Sydney where she comforts patients who are feeling low. Now, AI companions like Viv are not meant to replace human caregivers, but rather provide additional support.